So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use a spectrum analyzer and a sweet generator to do a quick test just to see how well a uh, antenna will perform at a certain frequency. So at the moment, I've got a project to work uh, complete that needs 50 dipole antennas to all work at the same time. Now I've uh, picked up some dipole antennas off a Chinese seller pretty cheap 35 pence each I think it works out at and uh, I just wanted to set up a uh, test uh, system where I could just quickly check each one just to make sure that uh, you know it's around working on the frequency that it needs to work at just give me a uh, quick baseline uh, interpretation of how well the antenna is actually going to perform now in order to do this test you're going to need something called a directional coupler you can pick these up off eBay and uh, you know they're pretty cheap these days these ones are a Chinese version and I only paid seven pounds for these free shipping and uh, these two here are a little bit more professional and a little bit more expensive now uh, these two couplers here they're not bad for the money but uh, they do have a lot of loss and uh, you do have to factor that loss into uh, any experiments that you do now i haven't used these on my network analyzer for instance but on the spectrum analyzer to do this kind of test you're just looking at the waveform you're not particularly interested in uh, measuring the db in and the db out and uh, getting your calculator out because all we're doing in this test is looking at the waveform and interpreting from that waveform whether the antenna is uh, hitting the right mark or not you know whether it's uh, actually perform in the way you want it to perform let's say so as uh, an accurate uh, test say in an SWR setup on the network analyzer these really don't uh, cut the mustard but for this particular experiment they're fine now these two couplers I picked up off eBay some time ago now um, it popped up I have uh, you know a few searches saved and this popped up and uh, there were both of them together for 45 pounds and it uh, also had a uh, make me an offer but uh, I didn't bother with the make me an offer I just bought them straight away because uh, to be quite honest these two for £45 are a uh, bargain and I didn't want to run the risk of somebody else coming in and buying them but uh, just uh, as an example this one on its own there's a few people uh, selling this on eBay at the minute and uh, there's a couple of uh, sellers in the US one seller is asking $158 for this one and another one is uh, asking $125 the shipping to the UK is a lot of money as well for something so small but it just gives you an idea of how much these actually go for I've even seen sellers trying to ask uh, around £250 for one of these but uh, it's typical of what you can actually scrounge out of broken uh, test equipment as well this particular make Nardia uh, you see a lot of these in the HP test equipment and uh, that's in my previous video I was saying you know if you're looking for a spectrum analyzer you need to be careful and do a lot of homework because uh, people do strip these out of uh, test equipment especially if they think they can make more money from uh, selling the parts off than they can selling the spectrum analyzer for instance now these two also differ slightly from the cheap uh, Chinese versions whereby you've got the two connections on the top here where this one doesn't. Now we need to terminate one of those connections in order to carry out this experiment with a uh, 50 ohm load. These you don't need to because the 50 ohm load is built into the coupler already. So it's not as uh, versatile because you don't have the two uh, connectors on top but there again it's uh, you know a lot more convenient because the load is already built into the coupler for you so this is a quick look inside of one of the cheaper Chinese directional couplers and uh, you can see here we've got these two bars here and basically how you actually uh, design one of these and how it works is very similar to how an antenna works for instance because we've got our signal line here we have our RF input uh, being fed in on this line here and we have our device under test on this port here and uh, this is the transmission line as I say so our test generator is working at 50 ohms 
the uh, 50 ohm signal going in and our antenna is also designed to work at 50 ohms to a particular frequency so any mismatch between those two and we get reflected power and the reflected power is transmitted from here onto the couple port here and then fed into our spectrum analyzer so that's just basically how a uh, directional coupler works can go into a lot more detail on the theory of these but uh, just a quick overview so you get an idea what's inside and here is the built-in port that I was talking about that's coupled off at uh, 50 ohms anyway and you can't really change that now as for the two transmission lines I think these are made out of some kind of mild steel it's not aluminium because uh, these uh, end connectors are soldered directly onto this but uh, with something cheap like this you know you're not going to get any kind of great accuracy with it and something else to bear in mind as well if your uh, lab is a particularly hot environment or you live in a hot country you're going to get different readings uh, you know in a hotter environment than a cooler environment because this metal is going to expand but for six or seven pounds you can't really grumble and to be honest I don't know how they can make something like this for six or seven pounds so this is the setup that I'm using I'm uh, using uh, my sweep oscillator feeding a signal in from 2 gigahertz up to 2.44 gigahertz that's the maximum that this particular plug-in will go up to and uh, it's uh, outputting the RF at 10 dBm so the RF is coming down this coaxial cable which goes into the uh, port here on the directional coupler this port is terminated at uh, 50 ohms and this port is connected directly to the spectrum analyzer and the test port at the moment there's nothing on there it's just an open port so what's nice about this setup then is you don't have to mess around calibrating anything you don't have to uh, put a particular dbm uh, reference source into this or work any formulas out all we're doing is looking at the waveform on the display and uh, how that responds to each antenna as we plug it in and that will give us an indication of how good or how bad the antenna is so to give us a reference line with the waveform then at the moment it's uh, an open port on the directional coupler so what I'm going to do is put a 50 ohm termination on that port and that should bring that waveform down so as you can see that reference level on the waveform has dropped down to the bottom now and that's our ideal level if we can get an antenna to dip down to that kind of level then it really is a good matched antenna so we're back to an open port on the coupler then and our reference level has moved up to here and that's our worst case scenario if when we connect our antenna and it doesn't move much beyond that reference line then we know we've got a pretty poor antenna and uh, we can you know put that to one side and not use it but uh, if we get the majority of them in say the middle around this area here then uh, we know we've got a good antenna so I've chosen eight of these little dipole antennas at random so let's give them a quick test look at the waveform and see if we can spot any bad ones so the first one then is a good one we're getting low reflections and we're getting a really good frequency response and the second one is also a good one again low reflections and uh, a good frequency response so here we've got our first bad one we're getting uh, bad reflections it's just as bad as a uh, open port and we're getting no frequency response whatsoever so that one can go in the bin so another good one then uh, low reflections and a frequency response right where we want it now this is an interesting one because we're getting a frequency response just before 2.4 gigahertz so I will bet that this antenna has been uh, cut a little bit too long so we'll put that to one side and we'll take a look at it in a minute and again another good one good frequency response and low reflections so this is the second bad antenna we've found we're getting bad reflections and no frequency response so that's another one for the bin so another good one a good frequency response right where we want it and low reflection 
So out of those eight antennas we've got two bad ones and we've got this one that's probably been cut a little bit too long so we'll open this up and trim about a millimetre off there test it again and we'll see what happens. So I've trimmed about a millimetre off the end of this it was a little bit long it was coming in at uh, 27 millimetres but I've trimmed it back to 26 millimetres so let's see what kind of response we get now and I'll have to pop the cover on as well because that will also give us a slightly different outcome. So I've trimmed a millimetre off there and it's uh, moved that frequency response along a little bit but it probably wants another half a millimetre taken off I'd say. So I've taken another half a millimetre off and you can see the difference that that's made. Much better frequency response and really good reflections. So I hope you found that video useful then, just a really really quick way to uh, test antennas quickly and uh, you know if you've got quite a lot of them just to make sure that they uh, will work on the frequency that you need them to. And out of the 50 that I tested for the project, 12 were bad so that's quite a high ratio of bad antennas and uh, you know it could really cause problems if I didn't do a quick test uh, straight away before I installed them uh, so now at least I know there's 12 bad ones and I know not to use them and uh, a little bit of an investigation on these it does seem that the uh, signal uh, wire of the coax isn't connected to the bottom of the SMA so they're only connected to the ground plane and sometimes uh, I get comments now and again from people asking why you would bother to make these little dipole antennas when you can get them for you know such a cheap price on eBay around a pound you know and free shipping and uh, this is the reason why because if you didn't uh, test them and you had no facilities to test them and uh, you got some bad ones then you know they're just not going to work well and uh, you'd either blame it on your equipment or blame it on the uh, antenna itself and uh, out of uh, interest as well I've got these longer range ones that uh, I uh, got in for another project and uh, you can see here these failed this one uh, isn't a longer range one at all it's uh, cut off uh, slightly short and there's quite a bit of rust in there as well uh, this is another one um, completely broken off inside there so uh, it's not soldered I could probably rescue this one by soldering it on there and putting some heat shrink tube on, tubing on there just to help support it as well and uh, we've got another one here again it's cut off slightly short and uh, it just looks banged up in there so you know the, these are in a batch of uh, 50 again and uh, I had about uh, eight of these uh, that were slightly dodgy the rest were fine but again you can buy these for about £1.20 on eBay and uh, people say why would you bother and that's the reason why I would bother taking the time to actually make it myself so if you did enjoy the video then please give it a uh, thumbs up any comments or questions below I'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one